Brian. Brian is back out at the Monroe Executive Airport. Going to go take a little flight here in November. What is it? Two zero zero five two. Going to invite you along on the trip. Recently, I participated in an aviation safety webinar that discussed the so-called impossible turn. That's the infamous turn back to the runway that pilots might be tempted to do should their engine fail shortly after takeoff. The webinar discussed how to turn that impossible turn into the possible turn. Today, I'm going to take this Cessna 172 out and test just how high I need to be to make that turn back to the airport in the event of an engine failure a viable alternative. As we join the flight, I am making preparations to depart runway 5 at Monroe. Part of that check is an engine run-up to check magnetos. Alright, I've already got the doors and windows locked and latched. I've got flight controls checked, flight instruments have been set. Fuel again is on my boat. Here is full rich. Alright, up to 1700. One side, then the other. RP. Good. Alright, section, amp meter, and engine instruments look good. Back down to idle, make sure it does idle. Check. And we are ready. Runner, are you going to come? Uh, 20052 is going to be departing runway 05. We'll be departing uh, to the south. Monroe. Hey, lights on. Rope lights on. Come on. No action on this. I'm going to use any flaps. Alright, on the center line, smoothly up to full power. And lift off. Pop down, down the lane, or the uh, brakes. My plan is to climb into the left downwind, then depart the traffic pattern with a left-hand turn out of the downwind, and fly directly over the airport southbound while continuing to climb. There are other aircraft in the pattern, so I need to keep an eye out for them and keep my distance. There's my turn to crosswind. Now the turn to downwind. That last radio call tells me there's a champ that just entered the downwind. And I have him in sight out the left windscreen. Alright, I have a champ off about uh, 10 o'clock to me. I'm going to turn left and go behind the champ and continue to climb to 2,500 feet.
I'll take it up to 2,500. The no traffic is pointed at code turning left, face runway 5 and road. Uh, you full stop or you can pick up? Full stop for uh, East Coast Charlie Thomas. Full stop, we appreciate the help. 384 Delta, 5 miles, the OR Alpha, low approach, only solid. Monroe traffic, Chicken 1568, 5 miles to the north, between 845 for left downwind 5. Now clear the airport traffic pattern and leveling 2,500 feet flying south. In a few minutes I will set up and see just how much altitude is needed to complete that safe turn back to the airport. A flight instructor named Brian Schiff put a great deal of thought, science and experimentation into understanding exactly when turning back to the airport might be considered a good plan should your engine fail. Right, what I'm going to do is slow way down and we're going to pretend we're taking off from 2,500. I am not going to get into all the details behind Brian's research. For that, please watch the webinar at this link. We're going to try to set up for this so-called impossible turn. Which I will also post in the comments. Okay, we just lifted off. Upward climbing. Monroe traffic 18 Echo down and clear runway 5 Monroe. When I get to 3000, I'll have an engine failure. One of the core items of information needed to determine if there is a chance of returning to the airport is understanding how much altitude your aircraft will lose in a 360 degree turn. Monroe traffic 215, let's see. What I'll do is chop the power back to idle, do nothing for five seconds, then roll into a 45 degree turn with a nose level attitude. That should give me close to best glide speed. Engine failure. One, two, three, four, five. You may ask why make a 360 degree turn when you only need to turn around. The reasoning and logic behind that is covered in the webinar and is sound. So, 360 degrees is what I will use. It looks like it took a little over 400 feet. This would be a great exercise for instructors to show students. You will know exactly how high you must be to have a chance of returning to the airport. Plus, it's good drill that incorporates bank, attitude, and rudder control. Let's do that again. Let's fly, just take off. There is much more to this maneuver than simply seeing how high you need to be to make a 360 degree turn. 
There are runway length concerns, minimum heights at certain distances down the runway, and other considerations. So please watch the webinar replay because Brian has put a lot of thought into using this turn as part of your takeoff planning. Uh, clearing for airplane, I see nothing in the area here. Helps if I make sure of full power. Alright, at 3000, simulated engine failure. There it is. One, two, three, four, five. We're going to make a 360 degree turn. There's a 180 back to the airport. Not back to the airport, just 180. There's 400 feet. And touchdown. And we can do it in about 450 feet. I think I will err on the safe side and use 500 feet AGL as the minimum altitude to be at before considering turning back in the event of an engine failure. That was fun. Remember, life is a journey. Enjoy the ride and thank you for watching.